Welcome to now about the James Bill. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. I have decided to take down the ceiling panels so that UPVC stuff is coming down. You'll be relieved to hear. Um, I am. I'm also relieved to know that I'd have to lay two pan two ceilings for the rest of the boat. I can just kind of do it once, like a, a normal person would. Um, it was just basically the wrong choice of material. UPVC that I've seen on loads of boats. So uh, my friend Dave's got it on his kind of like soffit material from a place like Eurocell sell it. Um, and um you know so anyway it's and i understood it to be kind of fire retardant um but i've also since discovered the melting point of upvc is 80 degrees so it's pretty low um and obviously if it's 80 degrees inside the boat i wouldn't be on it but still um it's uh yeah that's probably not the right choice of material so this mdf kind of panel i reckon is going to be the way to go mdf is not the kind of the best material to work with in terms of finish you the edges and the back of it is going to need a lot of treatment um, or just kind of protection before it goes up because obviously moisture and MDF don't mix particularly well. But I should get a nice surface on the top so um, in order to paint and things. So I reckon that would be right, but I need to redesign my ceiling idea now with this kind of in mind. But first off, yeah, I've got to kind of take down all this ceiling and then go and get myself the new stuff. Um, I do have a bit of a help though, because I've got a subscriber on the channel, Jim, but he's come over from America, from Michigan it is. He's coming over to do a documentary on narrow boaters um, and our way of life. And I think so he's with me for a couple of days and after me, he's going up to see uh, David from Cruising the Cut. Um, so whilst he's here and he plays guitar and he's a carpenter, so um, I'd be a fool if I wasn't to use his skills um, in various ways. So. Um, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show him the sights of Hemel and take him to Selco. Right. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be good, isn't it? Yeah. Full boards, nice kind of groove to it. I think they're all the same patterns. This stuff here and this stuff. It looks like it. Yeah, it's the same, isn't it? I can, that'll be good. Right, let's get six of them. After just using one ratchet strap and Jim's hand, I managed to get all six boards back to the boat. This is my mate Finn's boat. Um, we're gonna go out for a little trip on that. Jim's come all the way from America. Shame you can't go out on a narrow boat. So yeah, we're gonna go out on the Finn's boat and help him down towards the Winkwell. I've got Jim helping on this lock, showing him how it all works, but he's watched enough YouTube videos to know that for himself. Here comes Finn and his dad on board their boat, Betty Swallock. So it's Finn giving a very manly wave as we go towards the rising sun lock. Apart from the boat. No, but that is my old boat. Oh, that is so sad to see. That is bloody sad. I love boaters. Only boat a boater would have made a sign like that. Look at the detail they've gone to. Right, let's get to this lock. I've got two more to go and then we've got this boat back home. Well, the good news is we got Finn's boat down to Winkwell and all six boards of MDF on the boat before the heavens opened. Right, so whilst I've got Jim on board, I'm going to use his help and we're going to get the ceilings down so uh, that's the first job i've got to disconnect the flue uh, and then whilst i'm doing that maybe jim could be unscrewing the thousands of screws <laughs> and then i've got to this is the this is the uh, the boards we've got on um it's a bit of a palaver it's mdf obviously so this needs to be treated first so the back obviously is prime so the, like, the main facing side's got primer on it um, but the and, and so are the edges, which is quite good. The ends don't, 
uh, and nor does the back. And obviously it's going to be on the ceiling, so it all needs to be sealed. Right, the ceiling is back to where it was before I started putting ceiling up. Uh, I need to make a few adjustments. I've got to trim the top of that and a little few bits around there. But all the old screws are out. I've taken all this stuff off here just to make it all flat so I don't need that anymore. So now we've got to prepare the first board. Obviously it's got this kind of tongue and groove effect, which is great. Um, problem is there's an even amount of these so the center of the board is actually that line there which is kind of no big deal apart from the lights need to go on it bang in the middle of the line I'd have preferred it if it was like that where the lights were in a cent you know if that was the middle bit but it's not it's like that which means I can either make my piece and have it like that or come up with something which goes on top of this bit here but either which way Jim where's the center point again of this of this, this board of this line here it's that side this of... one yeah okay so it's this the center point is not exactly in the middle of that it's actually that side there so yeah I that's what we're going to put a plinth or something yeah I think it would look all right I reckon that's what it's going to have to need it's going to have to have a central plinth So we're going to be using the old ceiling as a template to uh, cut out the hatch and uh, mark out where the holes are for the lights. We've trimmed a bit of the hatch out, um, not so much because otherwise these we run the risk of these two bits snapping. Um, and I've had a bit of a snap already today <laughs> on the boat, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we've sanded down the holes that we've made, so we're just going to go in with some PVA to seal the insides and kind of give it as much protection certainly around this one here because that's the mushroom vent and then we're going to go on with some we're just going to paint the whole lot that pga glue's dried nicely now we're just going to go on and put on some paint so just one coat of thick paint should be all right it's all been sealed quite well around the uh, vulnerable parts i think that's the first coat done it jim in it that'll be all right yeah. holes are all done that's the important part. You can right. see where the PVA's gone on. It's much, you know, as a sealant, then you paint on top of it. It's much better. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about any of that. But, yeah, we've slapped some paint on it. So let it dry, and then we're gonna attempt to offer it up. Right, I mentioned that I had a crack earlier, um, or a split. Um, it was when I was taking off the PVC bit from there, uh, the bits where it was stuck on with the CT1 were bloody well stuck on. So I gave it a bit of force and backed into this. And it has snapped all the way down there. So um, I'm a bit annoyed. Well, I'm extremely annoyed. Um, even though you can kind of think you can make your piece with that. Um, some glue and a load of varnish, but the reality is I can't make my piece with it. So that's gonna be replaced. The only saving grace of it is that this bit here, apart from the little bit of um, kind of shelving, which was gonna go there, this whole side here was gonna be as is. And as all the plywood I got in the boat, that is the worst bit in terms of grain. There's nothing interesting at all apart from that little bit there. Compare it to that, which is like really lovely to see. So I guess that is the only 
kind of half good bit about having split that. If I was to have damaged any bit of timber on the like kitchen, it was going to be that one. So I'll redo it. Um, lessons learnt. Basically, this is obviously a vulnerable spot until the... Well, kind of, it's always going to be vulnerable, uh, even once the countertop's on it. I didn't put any reinforcement at the top here like I did on those ones there. I, put, I don't know if I can lift it up and show you. Uh, yeah, I put those things in, which just obviously reinforced it well. So I didn't put any of that in. I only put one coat of fiberglassing on, as opposed to three like that one. So, yeah, lessons learnt. Anyway, I think that is probably nearly dry. So uh, let's get this offered up. Right, one prop at the ready, another one down that end. Well, we kind of have one here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's kind of, let's raise it up and get it up to there. And don't worry about the cables. Let's try to just tuck them in if you can. Push them backwards, yeah. One's actually just got stuck, so I say not worrying about it. You see, the new one I just put in. Down there, down your, is it, is it through? Yeah, okay, cool. Is that all right? Okay, cool. We need to push it. So take that down a bit. Okay. Yeah, you're on your marks back here. Yeah. Or almost. Caddy Wampus. Okay, I'll get a little this. long here. But long there. Yeah, did you need to make a notch there still? Oh no, it's here. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, there it went. Okay. We're good now. Yeah? Yeah. Let's take your multi tool. The multi tool. Yeah. That's good. Yep, I think you're right. Okay, should we get some screws on there? We said we're using those decent ones, we're yeah. in a countersink and a drill. Uh, you want to drill and I can come behind you with the countersink? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, countersink is there. Uh, the battery for that one is on charge. on charge. And you probably don't have to use as many screws either. So Bloody hope not. Well, with this being as stiff as it is. Well, exactly, yeah. Well, there we go. We've got it up. The line up there on the ceiling is much nicer. It's taking the contour really well. So it's good. Happy with this. Obviously, I've just got to cut out the hatch and stuff. Yeah, that's worked well. Well, I'm well chuffed with this. Um, this looks great. When I first took the boat, um, it had ton groove ceiling on it. Uh, I took it all down because it was knackered and by the time I took the bulkheads out, which took out half of it anyway, but everyone screamed at me saying, oh, it's lovely, tongue groove and everything. And it was, uh, I do like tongue groove, certainly on a long space like this, it does work really well. That stuff wasn't, putting each thing up on its individual things takes time and, you know, it's, uh, but this is just, this is great. It really is. It's a really decent product. It's, and I got it a bloody good price. Travis Perkins, this was 78 quid. 
and I managed to get it for 31 quid a board from um, from Selco. So, uh, and it meant I could, you know, show Jim the highlights of industrial estates in Britain and the pissing rain. Um, but uh, yeah, now this is this is cool. So I reckon once I got the three lengths of this down here, that is going to look pretty striking. I need to redesign my ceiling now because of this. Um, so I'm going to have to have that central plinth here because these lights don't quite work now because of that routed out bit. Uh, the mushroom vent's not going to sit on it very well because of that. So I'm going to have to uh, scratch my head tonight and have a think about uh, what I can do about that. It does make me think I could have some light coming that way now. So I'm wondering about maybe some recessed strip lights or something like that, coloured LEDs, you know me. So yeah, something like that might be quite good. Um, I saw something very similar on Finn's boat. So um, yeah, but I think I'd probably maybe diffuse it a bit so it looked a bit pretty, I don't know. I'll work out something, but I think that might be the way to go. Um, I'd like to thank you, Jim, so much for well, for coming and spending time with, with me and us and the gang. Um, I'm glad you got to meet everyone. Um, and uh, thank you so much for your help. I mean, it was just great. Uh, it was really good timing, actually. Uh, maybe not for you, but it certainly was for me, getting these boards in and everything. Um, and a carpenter and a guitar, not just a guitarist, but a luthier, a guitar maker. Like, right, how cool is that? So he had a look at my Takaminis, showing me what I need to do. But essentially, it's a good guitar, fretboard needs cleaning. Surprise, surprise. So, uh, yeah, that was good. And Jim, he took pity on me when I whacked that. And, oh, gosh, I can't believe that. But anyway, yeah, so I need another board for that. I need five, six more boards anyway. So seven more boards in total from Travis Perkins, which is only next door. So that's going to be super easy. Um, and if I get that on in the next week, if I can, then that would be great. Um, but, yeah, it, Jim, it was just a really nice to spend some time with you. Um, and I'm sure David from Cruising the Cup will echo my comments. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing the documentary and I'll tell the other audience members about it um, whenever you make it. Um, thank you also to Rory uh, and to Raymond for uh, putting some money in my, um, uh, what's it called? The buy me a coffee thing. Um, <laughs> I, I got a really good deal on this stuff. But um, yeah, I've spent a bloody fortune on ceiling. Uh, so, I don't know. If anyone wants any of that PVC, you know where it is. Come and help yourself. God knows what you're going to use it for. But um, happy days. Cheers, Jim. Hope you have a safe flight home. Thank you all to, for watching. Till next time. Take care. Bye-bye.